From the ZTV Sports Report this week, we're at the queue for MAC action. Get ready, the show starts right now. <laughs> That's it? Well Hello everyone, I'm Casey Hodgkiss. And I'm Sartaj Ojala. Our men's basketball teams played some great games in the Mid-American Conference Tournament, including Northern Illinois, Western Michigan, and Kent State. This led the Zips to the semifinals, where they took the bull by the horns and challenged the Buffalo Bulls. Let's see some of the highlights from those games and what transpired in the semifinal round. In the regular season finale, the Zips faced arch rival Kent State at the MAC Center. Jake Kretzer gets the game started off as he nails the three, but it was Kent State's Derek Jackson who stole the show as he was 3 of 4 from downtown and 7 of 8 overall on the night. Quan Cheatham then hits the three, but Derek Jackson slams the door as he makes one of his own. The Zips began to chip away at Kent State. Here, Cheatham with some fancy passing finds Isaiah Johnson for the slam. But Jimmy All is able to lunge his way to the basket and the Flashes lead at half 37-29. The Zips would be in a dogfight the second half. The Zips would get an Antonio Jackson 3, followed by a DG Ibatayo layup, and then a Reggie McAdams 3. The same 3 would follow up the scoring as Ibatayo gets a layup, followed by a Jackson 3 and another deep McAdams 3. The Zips would be down 2. Isaiah Big Dog Johnson picks and rolls his way to the easy basket. Reggie and Antonio double down again and hit another clutch pair of 3s to make it 76-73. Niles Evans is fouled but only makes one free throw and the Zips are down 1. Jimmy Hall then is fouled but only makes one free throw so the Zips have a chance. On the final possession for the Zips, the little guy makes some moves, gets past Jimmy Hall and ties the game at 77. Last chance for the Flashes, Chris Brewer gets the inbound and goes coast to coast and gets the layup just as time expires and the Flashes win 79-77. Reggie McAdams led the Zips with 17 points followed by Antonio Jackson with another 16. For the Flashes, Derek Jackson had 22 points and Chris Brewer followed with 20. The Zips got the opening round of the MAC tournament kicked off against the Northern Illinois Huskies. The Zips came firing out on all cylinders. Here, Antonio Jackson starts us off with a three ball, then a step back baseline jumper. The Zips started the game on a 9-0 run. Cheatham hits a big three, then DG Bataille and Antonio Jackson each drive to the hole and get the tough buckets. The Zips put on a three-point clinic on the evening as they were 14-30 from downtown. Ibatayo again in traffic makes the bucket. Then Niles Evans swings it over to Reggie McAdams in the corner who buries the three. And the next thing you know, it's 35 to eight, all Akron. The Huskies played hard this game, but they were no match for the Zips. Here again, Cheatham hits another three. Then DG Ibatayo goes one, two, three the hard way. And I think he's pretty pumped about it. Ibatayo finished with 18 points off the bench. Akron led at half, 48 to 20. The Huskies tried to make a game of it as Armstrong slams it home. The crowd gives an ovation for Big Pat Forsythe, and here he muscles his way for the bucket. DG Batayo hits the corner pocket three, then Aaron Jackson and Antono Jackson follow up with threes of their own. The Huskies try to make a game of it as they end the game on a 17-3 run of their own, but it's not enough to overtake the Zips. With the win, the Zips advance to the second round of the MAC tournament. For the Zips, DG Batayo led the way with 18 points followed by Reggie McAdams with 15. Eric Armstrong led the way with the Huskies with 12 points of his own. The Zips faced off against the Western Michigan Broncos at the Quicken Loans Arena in the second round of the MAC tournament. Western Michigan's Austin Ritchie hits this three and the Zips got off to a slow start. But sophomore Quan Cheatham draws the charge here and the Zips wake up. Then he knocks down this open three on the evening, Quan Cheatham had a double-double with 11 points and 10 rebounds. Things get defensive as Quan Cheatham tells Connor Tava, not in my house, as he swats the ball away. DG Ibatayo hits a three, then Jake Kretzer matches up with his own, only for DG to go back and get another three from the top of the key. The Zips jumped out to an early lead and never looked back. Reggie McAdams was the key to success for the Zips, as he finished with 15 points off the bench, including three deep balls. The play of the game, however, is right here when Niles Evans finds Reggie, who races past the defender for the monster jam. The last time McAdams had a dunk like this was in the MAC tournament a year ago. The Zips were having a three-point party as they were 12-29 from behind the arc. 
Kretzer's extra effort here goes a long way as Cheatham gets another chance to bury the three. Antono, Jake, and Reggie each add one, and the Broncos just didn't have enough to keep up with the Zips. Akron won 58-45. Leading for the Zips was Reggie McAdams with 15 points, followed by Antono Jackson with 10 of his own. Thomas Wilder led the Broncos with 12 points and 7 rebounds. The Akron Zip took on the Kent State Golden Flashes in the quarterfinals of the MAC tournament on Thursday. Um, it was like a trip to the dentist today. We're up four with a minute to go. You gotta get a stop. All right, let's get it started here. Akron, Kent State, it's bound to be crazy. Jackson gets it started off for the Flashes, hitting the three. Now Zemmons says, hey, I can do that too, man. He hits one. Then, whoo, man, can't stop that. Can't stop that for Kent State, Get, doing work down low. Jimmy Hall hits a jumper there. Reggie McAdams off his game early, you know, not looking too good. Then, oh, Jackson with another three. Then takes it away from Forsyth, gets with a good defense. Then Forsyth is shut down again, and oh, it's not looking good for the Zips, and Cheatham, he's showing that with that ball spike, got a warning, and then, you know, Devereaux Manley getting the... Fans pumped up, and oh, it's looking even worse for the Zips, but at halftime, they're just down eight. Then, in the second half, the Zips got the flashes in foul trouble, and the Zips, they took advantage, hitting their free throws. You know, here's Ibatayo, you know, doing what he does, driving in, and no, and oh, he drives in in the fancy finish, and oh, he's, uh, let's bleep and go, he says. Um, you know, I'm sure that was nice, and then drives in, and he, oh, he gets it again, and you know what, sure, why not, just hit a three, why not? Yeah, he can do that. He'll do that. Now it's just 32-34. Kent State with 13 to go. Pat going to work. But, you know, Kent State answers right back. Pat, hey, I can do that too. But now, you know, it's a four-point Kent State lead with two minutes to go. And Reggie McAdam for three. Woo! All right. So now, Ibatayo hit two huge free throws to get the Zips lead. Oh, just like last week, it almost got in, but this time it actually didn't, so the Zips lucked out. Niles Evans gives the Zips a two-point lead at the line. So now Kent State, you know, three wins it. Oh, fakes it. Kicks it back out to Manley, and it goes in! It goes in! But came after the buzzer, and the Zips survive with a final score of 53-51. to In the semifinals of the MAC tournament, the Zips faced off against the University of Buffalo Bulls. Antono Jackson misses this shot, but Jake Kretzer is right there for the putback. And then Niles Evans back-to-back -back drives to the paint and goes up and around. Antono goes high off the glass, then Kretzer hits one from downtown. And finally, Pat Forsyth spins and shoots over Justin Moss, and the Zips are rolling. Jake Kretzer straps up for three, followed up by a Nick Adams three, but the Zips were just 7 of 30 on the evening from downtown. But the Bulls stampede back. Xavier Ford gets these two putbacks, and Buffalo goes on their own 7 to nothing run and go up by one at half. Justin Moss gets the second half started off with this mid-range jumper, and Xavier Ford gets inside twice more, and the Zips trail 39 to 32. But the banks are open for Quan Cheatham, then Big Dog Johnson slams one home, then Niles Evans hits these four free throws, and the Zips lead by one. BGE Bataya attacks the rim, and the Zips still hold on to a one-point lead. Will Regan strokes this three, and the Bulls never look back. Second chance points were huge for the Bulls in this game, as they outscored Akron 20-4 in this category. After three misses, Rodell Wigington finally gets it and puts it in. Late threes from Antono and DG were not enough as the Zips fell to the Bulls, 68-59. Jake Kretzer led the way for the Zips with 12 points, including 10 in the first half. Followed by Niles Evans with 8, and for the Bulls, Xavier Ford had a 17 points and 11 rebounds. The men's program announced Saturday that they will be not participating in any postseason tournament. Our own Scott Nixon and Daniel Cermak had the opportunity to catch up with two of our men's basketball players before the tournament. Let's see what our Zips had to say about the back tournament.
bigger piece in our program, rebounding, of course, scoring, just efficiency. So we knew me and Al were had to step it up a lot. He was a leader for us, one of our leaders, one of our seniors. He had been in the program for a while. He had, you know, a lot of experience in this league, you know, so a lot of our younger guys followed right after him. And, you know, after losing him was, you know, a hit to our team. But, <clears throat> you know, we can't use that as, that as an excuse, you know, uh, for the season. for our team to take the time to sit down with us and share their experience. Both are seniors and will be lost to graduation. Good luck guys, they've been a pivotal part of the program. Well, we have to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we pass the ball over to our Lady Zips. Can they repeat as MAC champions? We'll find out. We will be right back. Welcome back. Our women's basketball team made it to the quarterfinals and faced the Eastern Michigan Eagles. The Lady Zips, who were the third seed in the tournament, got a first and second round bye and were fresh to start their journey to repeat as champions. Sina King and one of the team managers was recognized for senior night. She was named MAC Player of the Year. Mac McMahon rebounds the ball and finds Plyden. Plyden throws the ball across the key to Brown, who sees King for an open shot, and she makes a three. <laughs> Carrie McMahon passes to Hannah Plyden for a three. Gibson misses her shot, but Anita Brown is there for the rebound to score. Miami's Bailey Reed dribbles the ball past Brown's defense for two. Megan Barilla passes the ball to Lauren Hung to score three points. A pass from Anita Brown to Plyven for another three-pointer. Miami's Kayla Brown rebounds her own shot, putting it back up and knocking down Akron's Burry. Plyven steals the ball and speeds down the court, knocking down two Miami defenders and makes her shot. With .2 seconds left in the first half, Senna King decides to try and throw the ball all the way down the court, but misses. Akron is in the lead with 36-30 in the first half. At the beginning of the second half, Anita Brown swiftly dribbles the ball, making a close layup. Hannah Plyman is open and makes another three-pointer. Anita Brown tries to move around Miami players, but decides to jump up for a shot. Miami's Courtney Larson gets a good arc and makes three. Brown passes to Gibson, who looks up and takes a shot for three. Brown passes the ball to Gibson, who goes up and makes another three back-to-back. -back. Gibson is on fire and makes another shot. Miami's Kayla Brown goes up and makes three with less than two minutes left of the game, but it wasn't enough. The Zips defeat Miami 67-55. On Thursday, March 12th, the number three Akron Zips faced off against the number six Eastern Michigan Eagles in the third round for the Women's Basketball MAC Tournament. Akron opened up the game right away with a three here by Sinek King, but the Lady Eagles responded right away with a three of their own. Sinek King tried to keep the Zips in this one by nailing three of her eight three-pointers. But the Eagles kept answering their challenge every step of the way. As you see here, Buckner shooting through the Cynic King defense and still nailing the basket. And the miscommunication here between Cynic King and Megan Barilla kind of summed up the Lady Zips night. But the three ball game by the Eagles was too much as they went on a 14-2 run in the first half and took a 33-13 lead at one point. But the Zips weren't giving up just yet as they make their own threes. 
and an unlikely play here as DeAndre Gibson's fighting Eagle defender get the ball back. The ball pops out right into Anita Brown's hands and she lays one home. And Akron is able to cut the lead down to 44 to 33 at halftime. Zips try to hang in the second half, but the points in the paint by the Eastern Michigan in their three ball game proved to be too much. And Eastern Michigan was able to secure a 95 to 66 win in the third round of the MAC tournament. And tonight's top performers from Eastern Michigan was Shaw Sweeney, who had 24 points, five assists. And from the Akron Zips was Anita Brown, who had 26 points, and she also had five assists. It is unfortunate for the Lady Zips to have their MAC tournament run end the way it did. Brian Bielko has our update of what transpired last week in the MAC tournament. Some exciting games for both the men's and women's teams as they grinded it out to become champions. Let's take it over to Brian. Hey guys, Brian here with your MAC update. As you guys may or may not know, if you've been watching our show today, the MAC tournament is coming to an end, and congrats to both the champions. These two teams were able to win because of their MVPs. Xavier Ford led Buffalo, and Counter Black led Ohio to championship wins and helped secure themselves MVP awards. Xavier Ford's performance helped lift the Bulls to their first Mid-American Conference title in program history. Ford had 18 points and 4 rebounds in the championship victory over Central Michigan on Saturday and had 17 points and 11 rebounds in the semifinal against Akron on Friday. For the women's side of the tournament, the standout performance from Kiana Black helped the Bobcats win the MAC title. Black scored 25 in the game and the Bobcats are dancing after beating Eastern Michigan 60-44. to Now that basketball is over and for the Zips and much of the MAC, you're probably asking, what else can we talk about? Don't worry though, baseball and softball are in full swing. As of right now, baseball, Ohio is in first at 6-1 and Akron is in second at 4-2 in the east. And for the west, the leader is Ball State at 4-3, followed by Central Michigan at 5-4. For softball, the east is being ran by Kent State at 12-5 and, and Miami at 10-7. On the west, Ball State and NIU are at the top. This has been your MAC Update. I'm Brian Bielko. Back to you guys in the studio. We have one more break before ending our show. When we come back, as mentioned, the Akron Zips came close to a championship game. Ben and Sartaj will analyze what went wrong, and Daniel Cermak will give us the top five plays of the tournament when we come back. Time to dial up a full court press where my co-host Sartaj and Ben Jeanette will discuss what the men's basketball team could have done better and take a look at the entire tournament in general and what it could mean for postseason. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on Full Court Press. I'm Elliot Georgiatis and with me is Sartaj Ojla and Ben Jeanette. Today's topics will be about the end of season MAC basketball tournament that took place recently where unfortunately the men's and women's teams were unable to make it to their championship games. To start we're going to look at the Lady Zips who had a first and second round bye but were then upset by the sixth seed Eastern Michigan Eagles. So what were some of the challenges they faced guys and why do you think they weren't able to get past that round? Sartaj why don't we start with you today. It was a tale of who's going to win the perimeter perimeter battle and mm -hmm. I really think that Eastern Michigan just completely floored Akron in this regard that they were able to knock down their three-point shots and they were defend the three-point shot. You have Hannah Plybond who on the team is second place for three-point shots in the MAC and it was really a tale of stopping her and stopping the perimeter for Eastern Michigan. Um, I took away two things from that game. One, if Hannah Plybin ain't hitting, they ain't winning <laughs> and they did an excellent job of defending her in the perimeter. They blanketed her, always had a uh, girl on her. Uh, she wasn't able to get clean looks at the basket, and she just struggled all game. Secondly is Shea Sweeney really took over for Eastern Michigan, and the Zips had no answer for her. You couldn't guard her in man-to-man -man because she would beat you on the dribble. You couldn't guard her in zone because she was able to go back and hit step-back jumpers, and her catch-and-shoot ability is phenomenal. Moving on to the men's tournament, the guys started off strong, beating Northern Illinois University, Western Michigan, and then Kent before losing to the would-be champions, the Buffalo Bulls. So to start, are you guys surprised with how far they ended up getting in the tournament? Because I'm pretty sure they outlasted what we had predicted here a couple weeks ago. So Ben, what did you think? Absolutely. I came into this tournament thinking that I would not be surprised if they were out in the first round against NIU. The reason I'm saying that is they entered that game winning only one game out of eight. So, you know, that right there... It's almost like you're not playing your best basketball mm -hmm. going into that game. So, and then Noah's down. ACL, best player out for the year. Mm -hmm. Pat Forsyth had turf toe at the end. So, you know, he's at limited minutes. NIU, on the other hand, was coming into the game who won four straight. Yeah. So I thought NIU was going to beat him. But then you saw a team really come together. Mm -hmm. Antino Jackson really stepped up huge in this tournament. 
ran out of gas towards the end when they lost to the Bulls. But all in all, I was really impressed, and I think it's one of the best coaching jobs Coach Dambrot has done in a tournament. Yeah. And one thing that I always tell everyone when it comes to the MAC tournament in Akron, I will never count out Keith Dambrot and his Akron Zips when their backs are against the wall. We saw it against Northern Illinois, completely stomped the Huskies. Then they went on to face Western Michigan, was able to pull away from the victory, and then the close Kent State game. Best rivalry in the MAC, let me just say that right now. And we mentioned all these players that have come up for the Zips. You got DG Abitayo, Reggie McAdams, Jake Kretzer, Pat Forsyth. Isaiah Johnson was huge in this tournament defensively. Mm -hmm. I think he's pretty the under radar person we're not talking about of the reason why they advanced so far. And the thing with Akron is if they didn't get their three point shots down, they went inside in the paint with Pat Forsyth mm -hmm. and Isaiah Johnson. And players are just making everyone else's jobs easier in the terms of opening up the floor, driving through the lanes, making sure their defense was on point. We saw a lot of times, you mentioned Antino Jackson, was able to fill in for Noah Robotham after devastating loss when he tore his ACL in the Miami of Ohio game. And Antino Jackson was the player that I really thought fueled the Zips. Just his level of play as a freshman point guard, he really took charge and wanted to extend um, the team to really not really give up. Because we know this has been a storied season for the Zips. For them to go this far, 21 wins in 10 straight seasons, that is something that I think only other four other schools, major schools, have achieved. Their game against Buffalo, what do you think it was that they just struggled with the most that lost the game for them? What do you think then? Look, they were in this game to win, even down the stretch, but they didn't play their best basketball. Yeah. And I really thought one of the keys there was is that they did a, Buffalo did a great job stopping Antonio Jackson. Mm -hmm. He had no assists, and I think that is a huge problem from your point guard, is not having any assists. And I, I don't want to give the loss to Antono Jackson. It's just, Coach even said, if Antono's not scoring 10, 12 points, they're not winning. But what I also saw is I saw a kid try to be a hero for that team and drive into double and triple teams into the paint, not kick the ball out. And when he did, turnovers would happen because he was already stopped underneath too, too far under the basket. Mm -hmm. So I really thought he didn't play his best basketball and didn't do the things that he needed to do as a point guard for them to win. Right. I look at this game and three things come to mind. Uh, first, Buffalo won the category in offensive rebounding. I believe the final stat oh, was absolutely. 17 yeah. offensive rebounds so much energy to Akron's four offensive rebounds. And that led to second chance points. Buffalo scored 20 second chance points and that really really just stopped the Zips, any momentum they were trying to yeah. really accomplish. And the third thing is, they got out physical. Now, at the beginning of the game, it was a physical matchup, but as the game went on, Buffalo made the statement that we're going to get crash the offensive glass, and you are not. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, for Full Court Press, I'm Elliot Georgiatis. Hopefully next year, our teams will make it to the championship. Now we have Daniel with our top five plays of the MAC tournament. Who made the list? Well, we'll shoot on over to Daniel for the answer. Hi, I'm Daniel Cermak, and I'm here for the top plays for show four. Here at number five, we have, yes, free throws, but you know, here at Akron, when someone makes clutch free throws, it's basically a top play. So here, DG Batayo, 30 seconds left to go in the Kent State game, quarterfinals of the tournament, Akron trails 50 to 51. DG's at the line for two, and sinks them both. Now, going on to number four, we have we have the women's team who, you know, they, yes, they you know kind of got blown out, you know, but they did have some good things happen. They fought back to get within 11 before halftime, and DeAndre Gibson was a huge part of it here, fighting fighting off the Eastern Michigan defender, pulling the ball away, giving it to Anita Brown, who puts it up and in. Another clutch performance this time from Reggie McAdams. In all honesty, DG Batayo's free throws don't matter if Reggie doesn't make this shot. Down by four. About a minute to go, Reggie sinks a three, brings it to within one, and Akron will eventually win for the final score of 53-51. to 51. All right, now on to number two, we have Anto Jackson, who always turns up some crazy performance whenever the Zips need him, and he did just that against Kent State, and he scored eight straight points, including a three, and two nice drives to the basket, including an and one that he got maybe a little bit too pumped up about. Now, now at number one, you know, maybe we shouldn't be surprised because you know he did the same thing last year against the same team on the same hoop even in the tournament. So here at number one, we have Reggie McAdams, finds the driving lane, gets up, and then boom goes the dynamite. All right, that's all the top plays we have for this week. I'm Daniel Cermak. See you next time. 
Well, it has been a great show. But sadly, our show has to come to an end. But next time, we swing on over to the batter's box with our baseball and softball teams. Also, soccer has a spring season coming up, and we will be watching it closely. Next time on the ZTV Sports Report. See you then. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy-winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.